So hello everybody, I thought it was uh, about time to give you a little bit of an update on the Temple Book Project. For those of you who have been around a little longer, you will remember that video that I made together with Lorenz Guardian with the ping pong uh, bat at the beginning, where I played a Waldstein on the clavichord in, in single beat and whole beat, and for me as well, this video was kind of unprepared. Um, this video was for me the real introduction into temple research, which of course I have been dealing with more or less in the years before and even when I still was in conservatory uh, studying with Jacques van Nootmessen. But um, serious, this thing became for me in the months before Lorenz's visit there, January 2017. You know the story. I played one of the slow movements of a Mozart sonata. I think it was the sixth one, one of the Munchen sonata still, D major, where the adagio um, was in a tempo that I was pleased and I checked with the metronome and it was completely in whole beat compared to Moshless. From that moment onwards, I realized that my idea of this tempo research, and you see that with other people, even on, on, on the internet, on YouTube even, still is there. I had the same idea like metronome marks. Yeah, they are there, they point to a slower uh, past, but um, do not take them seriously and use them whenever it, they fit your taste, you know, but for the slow movements, I struggled, you know the story, and then Lorenz, uh, who wrote in 2010 this book, um, well, we became friends around 2009, even before this book was published, and so every time he visited here, our house, just as a friend, we played some forehand stuff, and we talked a little bit about this, also the slow movements, and I always said, like, Lorenz, this, this cannot work, it, 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 it doesn't make sense, so guys, if you have the same feeling, I, I, I hear you, because I've been there. I feel very stupid right now, because with a source and with a friend like him, I should have known better. But that moment, I realized, like, listen, if this adagio, which is so elaborated with, uh, with fast note values and ornaments, it's, 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 it's a perfect tempo, a whole beat tempo that Marshall escaped there. If that works well, then for the rest it should work as well. And what happened is that I just started to play accordingly and not wonder or not do the research while playing because that doesn't work. And guess what happened? 85%, um, I would say, of all the pieces, slow movements in this particular regard became instantly without a problem. And for me, this was like, these clouds were opening and... I use this image, but I hear the angels sing, like really, this, 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 the level of beauty that Jen hits on you when you first start accepting this as a reality, even hypothetically, just do it for one month and you will, you will enter a new musical universe. And 15% of some movements, like the slow movement of the Pathétique, for instance, that's one of the most legendary, very slow movements in whole beat. There I struggled because also I still had the clavichord. That's changed with the pianoforte that has a longer tone and all of that, of course, the Pathétique is not made for the clavichord. It's, it's designed for a pianoforte. So I'm not saying that there were not things to fix, but that's, of course, what's our job as a musician. Right now, four years, four years in that project, I can say that there is actually, honestly, not a single movement out there that causes problems. And so this was a hell of a journey for me. So what we decided back then in 2017 was to write a new book. Or actually, we, we decided to trans translate this book, which is still available. It's published in 2010. And I'm not kidding. This, is, um, this had no exposure. And if you follow the channel a little bit longer, you might know already why uh, this was kept under the radar. Um, but this might be the most life-changing for musicians um, book published already now in the 21st century. And I'm not kidding, this is, this is mind-blowing stuff. We decided to take this project back on. I decided to do more serious stuff with my life in this regard. Like, you cannot be in the middle there. You have to choose a side. Either the metronome marks are guiding you as a way to reconstruct the composer's intention of you just, or you just don't. There is really no middle ground. 
I'm not saying that it's an easy thing to, to, to explain and all of that, but I made my decision. Also because I wanted, with the piano forte that was about to arrive, I wanted to record all the Beethoven sonatas. And so what, 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 what typically happens is that when you play those Beethoven sonatas slower, people, people typically like it, but they ask the question, why do you play it so slow? And then, of course, I have to have an explanation. A what better way to explain those things than just work with someone who has been doing this research for 40 years. And so we started, I started to translate or make, make a, pre um, a preliminary translation of the book, but soon realized like, listen, um, if we are going to reach an audience here or that that's maybe not primarily um, uh, you know, composed of, uh, out of musicians or, or scholars, music scholars, musicologists, but musicians, we might have to change our tactics, our perspective. And at the same time, Loden started to pick up his research again and new elements um, surfaced the, the entire time. And so very quickly, we came to the conclusion, this book actually is a kind of preparation to what actually needs to be written. Um, also, as you know, um, I made quite some videos on tempo research and they were all, well, kind of reflective of the ongoing research. So uh, quite some important sources I already brought on the channel, but there is a lot more to cover. But there came a moment where this channel also, you remember those days, well, kind of was under let me say, not attack, but you know what I mean. Uh, there were, we were reaching a fairly large audience that was not particularly pleased with what we were doing. And so there was a lot of uh, turbulence, I would say, but also a lot of comments, a lot of um, so-called counter-arguments. And instead of rejecting all of those, we took everything seriously because the, the most stupid thing you can do is when people act out of emotion and then you know, the messages were not oft, were often like, you know, uh, the package around the message, I would say, was not often very polite or very friendly or very like, um, you know what I mean? And so I think the most stupid thing you can do is when people react like that in a, a moment of anger that you reject the entire message. So we took every message seriously in spite of what people sometimes think. So we very carefully analyzed all of that and in a way it helped us also shape the idea of the book because when people have questions and in this case of course there is sometimes even a biased perspective against this no matter what no matter what the WBMP cannot be right okay I get that but to make the arguments the counter arguments which are not you know never almost actually never were um, of this of a nature to undermine the work of the, or the, the logic of the WBMP, but yet there were questions that we know and realize that many people will have those. And so it's very hard when you have a completely new idea as this metronome reading that affects the music that we all know and love so much. When you have that, it's, it's, it's completely logical, it's completely normal that when people hear of that for the first time in this, in this musical scene of today where the musicology and many leading musicians, influencers, are like emotionally uh, opposing this idea that a lot of even uh, amateurs or music lovers would just be as biased against this as, 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 as the establishment, I would say. So in this, in this atmosphere, we need to create something in this book that opens people's minds, that takes them on a journey, that not just bombard them with facts and put them in a position where actually this element of opposition is actually fed, like become stronger whenever you bombard people who are convinced of something not to be correct, not based on logic, but based on emotion or based on authoritative voices of someone else, what happens is that you, that you create, that you enlarge the gap between the message you want to give and the, uh, the actual, uh, the, the person you want to reach. So we have to close that gap. And so the new book is going to have a lot of surrounding chapters so to open people's minds to let people see 
what the problem is. And so I go over that in, in, in just, just a second. Uh, not that I'm going to um, share today the content of the book. It's almost ready, but I will only do that when it's really, really ready. So um, you also know that in the past years, Alberto came on the channel. We recorded the 32 sonatas. They are ready now. Um, the versions that are on YouTube will not be the final versions. There is a lot to say about recordings, but I will make another video on that. We will release a lot of recordings. We have not been sitting still here, um, but the recordings have not been released on YouTube. That's another thing. We have a plan for releasing recordings in the future, but that's for another video again. So it's important to know that whenever we will publish the book, we will have a lot of recordings of a very high level and quality. Um, because that it is. I mean, we're not going to say about our own work that we are the best. Of course not. That's just, that would just be stupid. But we can say that the work that we do is on, of a certain level, not to say on, on a certain high level. You can discuss about details about interpretation, but the basics are certainly there. So this will be new that this book will go out together with a lot of recordings. Um, so yeah, um, what also will be done is the book will be accompanied by a video course. So you have to imagine, and also that I have to say that in last year, Basically last Christmas, before Christmas, we had here a conversation with Alberto. I don't know what symphony we recorded. The eight symphonies have been recorded right now, guys. So um, again, I, I have some, uh, some more things to share with you because I've been a little bit absent uh, the last months for a reason. So we were having a drink after recording and Alberto said to me like, listen, we need to book. There are a lot of people actually waiting for the book because as a musician, if you're out there and you've been, you are asked like, how do you play? How do you explain this metronome marks? It's all nonsense. You get the, the, the avalanche of counter arguments. And I get it when you are a musician and you play, I mean, you cannot do the, the work that Lorenz did in the past 40 years. Even for me, it's like hard. And so the book will provide all of you that are that want to go forward with this, students can ask questions now to their teachers when the book is there because they can say like page 355, there is this written with this source, what's your, what's your take on this? So they, this book will provide a lot of material for musicians and for students. And Alberto said to me, like, listen, um, YouTube is great and we had a great year last year. We grow like from 20,000 to whatever, 35,000 subscribers, which is for a channel like us, we are playing with, uh, we are we're dealing with classical music. That's a niche audience. There we, 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 we are actually niching down to early music. And in the early music movement, we are still niching down to like people who want to read the metronome like we do. So we are a very small audience, but almost 40,000 subscribers, that's great. But there he asked the question, like, you put a lot of effort in YouTube, which was true. I mean, obviously, those videos take, take forever to make. Um, but we need a book. And if you continue like this with YouTube, we will not have the book in five years. And he was right. So we made a decision to, you know, cut back the number of videos. And you all know the moment where I skipped the Wednesday video, we still had a lot of recordings to release, but also that came to an end. In the summertime, uh, I released a lot of my or old organ stuff, which a lot of you actually liked. And also for me, it was like a real adventure to listen to them again. But bottom line, they, they, there were no videos anymore to build the channel more like we created an audience and that I left behind a little bit. And you see it on the channel. The channel has still every video. Uh, you guys watch the video, so I'm really, very happy, but there is no real growth. We will change that in the coming months. YouTube will come back and we will, we will, we will restore everything as it was, but even more. But that's for another video. So I start writing, writing, writing a lot. So a lot of my time went into writing and that was necessary because you have to imagine Lorenz, since we met in 2017, he was building up his stuff. He is focused mainly on the pendulum time. So 16th, 17th, or 16th century, even not, that's just the, 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 the period towards Merzen, but Merzen, Merzen is his centerpiece. And then he goes up to the also 19th century, but there where the metronome comes, his book is not, you know, 
um, it provides a lot of information on the 19th century, but there were a lot of things missing. Like, for instance, historical durations, which is something that popped up last year or two years ago on the internet really, really a lot. We will have a huge uh, YouTube series on that. It's not yet recorded, but prepared. The book will, of course, spend attention to that. But we had a lot of other sorts. But he was working on his stuff like for four years and I was making videos, my recording, like the Leuven project, you know, everything was ongoing. And I felt suddenly that what Alberto said was really true. When I would just continue like that, I would never uh, get my stuff done because my part was everything around lore and stuff. The perception game, if you want. Listen, if we would just play in a world that was based on logic, we would win hands down. I mean, you have a metronome, you can read the metronome either as a pendulum, as a, as a modern metronome, either the full swing or the single swing, and you take 200 scores, you have a piano and you have a metronome, and then we win hands down, even when we would not have a single piece of evidence to, to support what we claim to be historically probably, most probably correct. Let's talk with two words. I mean, that's, but I mean, I mean what other solution do you have? What is the other solution? And so um, I realized that all of that uh, adding to Lorenz parts, which was essential. He is an academic writer, you know, he is a doctor in the theologic theology. I mean, he writes like an academic, but I know, I realize, like certainly with his German text, it is very hard to understand, uh, to go really with him deep into this text. You have to, uh, it's the old way of writing. Like you have a chapter and at the end of the chapter, you summarize in your brain and then you kind of grab really the image what he wants you to communicate. But that's not how many people today read. We want to have information uh, input. And so my job is to create that book around the book of Lawrence. And actually what happens is now um, we are talking about a book of, um, well, around 750 pages. I was, it's, we take this book of Wolf's Bach's, uh, Bach's biography, the 650 pages, but we are talking now about a book of seven or 800 pages in this format. So you can easily imagine what I did last year. It's right, right, right. Also, um, I'm a musician. I love doing research, but I felt like very much that I had to level up also my work as a researcher, my tone in the book, the language that I use. On YouTube, I can be a little bit more, you know, thought provocative, but in the book, I need to find this line where you have the sources presented, the, and the context around that, and in a way that people actually like to read. So um, today, um, because we're already 17 minutes in the video, let's not make it too long. Um, this is almost, it's not completely done, but the framework is done. Lorenz parts is completely done, I would say. And for me, um, there is still 20% to go. So part one will, 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 will be mainly my part to give you an impression is on A4 Word document of a size 270 pages long. So there, this is something, this is also something mentally that is, I mean, you have to keep everything together here. So um, as we speak, the book is being translated by um, a professional in Brussels, also a musician, by the way, who is uh, doing a lot of stuff with Renaissance music, which is very helpful. Um, the, so translated into English, obviously. And my parts that are ready are also being um, not translated, but uh, edited by a native English speaker. So there is already a team working on, on this right now. Certainly the parts from Lorenz to uh, that kind of German to English is very hard. Also terminology, everything needs to be like on the highest level. And so we will need some time. The, the date that we project to launch the book is right before Christmas 2022, so next year Christmas. In the meantime, we will record uh, the Ninth Symphony this December, and we will release the Ninth Symphonies before the book is published. So, but they go together, actually. But uh, we will build this up uh, towards the publication and the release of the book. Um, the book will go on Amazon. We will probably print it ourselves, but we will we will organize. We will have a board of reviewers ourselves, 
um, which is not the easiest task to bring people together to review a board, to be our own peer review, but uh, we want to keep everything in our own hands because we want to promote the hell out of this book. When we would go to, the, to a classical uh, editor or publisher, that is possible as well, would cost us also money, but what happens is you, you become part of a catalog and the, the, even the rights you lose of the book. So everything that would be changing for a second edition, we have to find, we will have to fight to get it in. We want to keep our hands on our work because we realize in this world where the establishment not particularly is waiting for this, not this book, but I mean, this would be our book, um, that we want to have everything in our own hands. Also, when we release it in uh, PDF form through Amazon, we, will ca we can play also with, uh, with Amazon's algorithm to have a reach that is potentially, if we do it right, but that's for other videos and certainly for the future, it's not for now. When we do it right, it's the same as on YouTube, then we can reach potentially a much larger audience than we do uh, with a classical publisher. There is a pro and there is a con, I get it, but that's, that's how it's going to be. So that's the plan um, with the book. So if I I'm not as active on YouTube, you will see it com comes back. We will have a new studio room with the clavichord there. I can make full-time videos there. So that will be, there will be a lot of, lots of changes, but give me some time. Then you know what I'm doing. It's a, it was a hell of a job and still is a hell of a job, but I'm, I'm, I'm certain that what we will create, there will be always things that will be missing, of course, because we have to close every back door. And this, this, this research is incredible to see how many things we touch upon that have never been discussed or not from this perspective. So you cannot expect Lorenz and I to do like almost as a side job because that it still is. Um, to do stuff that 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 normally would require like on an academic level like two or three three, three sabbatical years for a team. But I think we will come a, a, a long way. Um, what will happen in the near in in the near future, except from that I want to bring you to back in a different uh, format um, is we are heading for releasing the first recording in the new setting, which will be Alberto's Preludes of Chopin. Um, it might sound a little bit weird. And you see, we have been talking for a long time, but um, those have been recorded on the Fritz. They sound magnificent on that piano. And we will make of those recordings a kind of test recording so that we can see what happens and with a new format. But on that, um, I'm going to update you in another video. So stay tuned for that. Um, if this is your first video, which I doubt you see on this channel because YouTube will not push this video, this one, particularly for new audience. But if, if it is, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, and also consider becoming a patron. It are the patrons that push us in the first place or me to continue with this work. It's sometimes a very lonely process here sitting at my desk on my laptop, just typing in things, searching for things, ending the day with just uh, two paragraphs that I delete the next day. But it are really the patrons that keep giving me the uh, the message like you have to continue. So if, if, if you want to push me even further and more, consider becoming a patron. It's really appreciated. Okay, guys, there you have it. Stay tuned and we see each other very soon again. Bye.